We want to welcome Jane Glatt, um, author of the upcoming Dinghies and Deceit, uh, which is book four of the Intelligencers series. And we have book one and three on either side of me here, one through three. On the... Also the author of the uh, Mage Guild series. And um, I don't remember what the series is called, Bookbinder's Daughter. The Conjurer's and... Bridge. Conjurer's or the Conjurers. I think it's just called The Conjurers. Yeah. Bookbinder's Daughter and um, Shaman Son. But today we're going to promote The Intelligencers because that's the next book coming out. Hello there. Hello. How are you? <laughs> Good. How are you doing? Good. I can't believe it's like book four already. I know. In this series. So. And there's going to be five total, am I correct? Yes. Yes. The fifth one, I have it in uh, first draft form. Cool. But this one is set a good part of it is set in winter so if people are looking to have something that helps them cool off in a hot summer <laughs> maybe this would help yes because book three it was just hitting winter they were worried about it freezing up as yeah. they were going through yeah. and whatnot so, so give in it this quick. one i can't see yeah. but yes there's there's ice and snow is there ice and snow yeah Oh yeah. Um, so um, give us a brief overview of both the Intelligencers and book four of the Intelligencers. Um, so the Intelligencers for me is, is kind of a book about family, um, whether it's your you know, birth families or found families. Um, so some of the key, uh, key people are like sisters and, you know, brothers and sisters and things like that. So um, it's basically uh, people have what's what I call traits and traits differ per person, but there's some kind of enhanced ability. Like one person Calder has, uh, his trait is luck. Mm -hmm. So things just tend to go his way. Um, and Dagren, her trait is unseen. So she picks up on things that um, other people don't notice. And so they become, they get recruited to be kind of the spy network. And so they're basically spies and they set off and try to, you know, they, they do work for like a spy master. Um, but what happens is you've got kind of internal politics that uh, people are looking for power and they're willing to destroy countries and have people starve and they don't really care. So it, it becomes kind of an internal political power struggle and um, an the intriguing. intelligences are, you know, kind of not really supposed to be looking into it because they basically are working for the person that's trying to destroy things. Um, but anyway, so so there's some main characters and the, I guess the fourth book uh, focuses a lot on a character called Pia, who's younger and she's on the cover. Um, so she's kind of a reluctant, uh, let's call her a reluctant heroine because she doesn't really want anything to do with intelligencers, even though she's been kind of forced to uh, yes. learn and go to the school for intelligencers. So a lot of the book is about her journey Again, it's the found family, it's the, you know, she has a sister, so she wants to protect her sister. Um, but then she kind of realizes that she can't protect her sister without protecting everybody. Um, so she kind of, that's part of her journey. And yeah, so, and I guess Calder has more family in that his, you know, his father has a secret family somewhere else. Yes. So then it's like, what does that family do? So how does he deal that, with that? So it really is kind of like family. So. Okay. Well, um, now what do we talk about next? <laughs> and spies, of course. Oh, and spies. I just, so spies. Yeah. So I, I, I guess I'll say, Two things, two main reasons why the book is the way it is. One is I, I went to Washington DC and went to the International Spy Museum, oh, which is cool. actually a 
fascinating place. They have a lot of like kitschy James Bond stuff, mm -hmm. um, but there's a lot of like Cold War. And then they kind of talk about the early spies who uh, in some parts of the country were called like intelligencers. Um, and another thing is I did a writing retreat in Lithuania. So this is kind of set in kind of the Baltic area. So that's why uh, you have kind of, uh, you know, people that are almost not quite, but almost Vikings. And a lot of the names are kind of pulled from that area. So. Okay. So what have you been doing in the end times here? Oh, the pandemic. Well, yeah. <laughs> I, uh, so this was, so I, I'm in Ontario. So we had a not bad summer. Mm -hmm. And then we had a kind of like lockdown in the fall. And in order to <laughs> make, give me something to get up and do. Um, so I, I'm, I live in Hamilton, which is uh, one of the major geological formations is the Niagara um, Escarpment. So think about Niagara Falls. So there's this big crack in, in the, the earth, basically. And it travels all the way through Hamilton. So Hamilton has a lot of waterfalls. So I decided I would go and visit a whole bunch of them. So I had my top 10. I think I made it to 12. Um, and there's all different ones. Like some of them are as high as Niagara Falls, but they're very, like, there's not a lot of water. And some of them are like really wide and, but not as tall. Um, so I spent my time doing that. There's even one that freezes and I didn't actually see climbers, but um, I got there just as they were packing up, but yeah, it freezes and people do ice climbing on it. So, um, you know, that was kind of like once a week, I would go out and do that just to get out of my place. Wow. So do other than that, it's like, you know, like everyone else, I'm kind of at home. <laughs> and you've been doing so. stand up paddle boarding, he said? Uh, yeah, yeah. So I live right on Lake Ontario. I can basically see it in here from my living room and there's a little beach near me. So uh, when I moved here two years ago, I bought an inflatable stand-up paddleboard. So um, I'm trying to get out once a week. I'm, I'm not very good at it and <laughs> it's pretty windy here. So I, I decided last year that because uh, I, I basically fell off and I couldn't get off, back on it. Um, I had like, like I wear like a, like a life jacket and everything and, it, and it, I couldn't get back on it. So I just swim to shore and get on. So I decided if it's too windy, I'll just sit on it. <laughs> and I bought like a, you know, like a, a kayak paddle for 50 bucks of Canadian tire. And uh, so, uh, yeah, I'm out there sitting on my stand up paddle board, just, you know, so you're doing around. sit down paddle boarding. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. But it, it's uh, it, it's good fun. I I love being on the water. I, I used to row as a younger person, so um, I absolutely love being on the water. Um, I love hearing the water. That's why I moved here. So that's cool. there you go. Yeah, that and writing. You've got a lot and eating food. ice cream. I might be eating a little more ice cream than I should, but hey, it's a pandemic. Aren't we all during this time? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, and I think another, ma I have to mention, another major accomplishment is mm -hmm. I started uh, Midsummer Murders and I watched all 20 seasons of it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so, and now it's over. I'm kind of like, now what do I watch? I know. That's a lot of binge watching there. Yeah. Well, you know, I wouldn't, so I wouldn't, I didn't do more than one a night. They're, they're like an hour and a half episodes. Oh, wow. So I'd like do one a night. So I, I've been at this for a long time, though. So. Because you said there was, what, 20 seasons? 20 seasons? 20 seasons. There's 21, but um, it's not on uh, are they, Amazon Prime yet. Are they the half seasons? Or are they... So are they well, they're British, so they're, episodes? Yes, yeah, so they're 10 or 12 Some of them episodes. are smaller. Some of them are six. Some of them are eight. Okay. They're, they're kind of all over the map for whatever reason. But I, I'm going to say on average eight episodes. Okay. So, so it's not 20, as... let's call it like 20 weeks of watching nothing but, you know, small town England uh, murder mysteries. <laughs> <laughs> so. I don't think I could, I've binged anything that much. Yeah, we've been watching more modern stuff. 
Uh, to be honest, it made it really easy. It's like, what am I watching tonight? Oh, I'm watching this. Because <laughs> you know how you sit in front of like Netflix and go, uh, it's been an hour trying to figure out what you're going to watch. That's true. So I didn't have that problem. <laughs> we're, we started watching Sweet Tooth. So that's where we're at. So all about the new hotness. Ah. <laughs> But we have watched a lot more than normal because we don't watch a lot of TV. But and goodness gracious, you have lots of books with us. You yes. Got, um, so why don't we quickly cover those as well? Because I'm trying to expand time. <laughs> okay. So uh, the Mage Guild uh, series is the first one. Um, yeah. So Ungilded is basically the story of Cara Fonte and she lives in a world where um, everybody pretty much belongs to a guild and you're born into a guild and you die into a guild except for Mage Guild because it, not everybody has magic. So if you have magic, then uh, you can become a Mage Guild member. And you know, because they have magic, they're the most powerful. Now, Kara is born into Mage Guild, but she doesn't have magic, so they think. Um, but it turns out she has almost like an anti-magic. So she can see spells, she can manipulate spells, but she cannot cast spells. She can't create magic, um, but she can disperse magic. So uh, yeah, she finds it. It takes a long time for her, everyone to figure out what she's doing. And again, as, as she, she's just looking for a place to belong because, you know, her mother has rejected her. The uh, Mage Guild probably, well, they would use her um, uh, basically stuck? to produce more yeah. people with magic because she comes from a bloodline with magic, uh, but she herself doesn't seem to have it. So um, it's her journey on basically trying to find a place where she belongs. So, and I guess the second book is uh, more of the same, but a little bit more on the romance side. Yeah. Um, and the third book is about her uh, brother. It's called The Unmage, and that's about her half brother, yeah. who also has the same kind of unmagic that Kara has, but he can also cast spells. So, um, and again, the same mother is, she's, yeah. She's a bit she's of a piece she's of a bit heart. trouble, <laughs> yeah, and the pol politics are cutthroat. So, yeah, um, and I guess the next series would be uh, Conjurers. Conjurers, and the first book is Bookbinder's Daughter, and the second one is is uh, um, Shaman Son. Hmm? Shaman Son. Shaman Son, right, right, right. <laughs> so, and that one is again about um, people not quite belonging, and. Uh, it's uh, set on, well, there's a world that basically is, is based on like a bridge. So there's a little town, it's on a bridge. And you have people that control the flow of goods through the bridge. Um, you have fishermen that have been cursed pre previously and they, they live on the water and they can't really live on land. And you have these um, mages and the mages, um, Magic kind of causes uh, weird deformities, let's call it that. Yeah. Um, and it turns out that it's because that they don't have, they don't have like a bloodline for magic okay. use, but Kara does. So, I mean, not Kara. <laughs> Wrong book. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Phelan. Yeah. But um, yeah, so it turns out that she can use real magic, but then they find out there's somebody else that a bad guy that who can also use real magic. Well, of course. What's so, the story yes. with a bad guy? Yes. Yes. So, and I guess that's it in a nutshell. So, so what else do you do besides um, writing and hanging out in the water? Uh, so, I like to cycle. I have a bike, and there's some good bike paths around here. Um, I have a couple of cats that I, I adopted them last uh, last year in the pandemic. Um, yeah. They're like older ladies, so they're like middle-aged cats. And um, like many of us, they 
They had a little weight problem when I got them. <laughs> so mine still um, has a weight problem. <laughs> <laughs> one one has lost like uh, one has lost some weight, but the other one, yeah, yeah, same. you'll steal the other one's food for sure. And she likes to eat plastic. I don't understand it. So she likes to eat plastic. I had to take her to the emergency vet once because she ate some plastic stuff. Yeah. yeah, mine's lost about two pounds, but the vet wants her to lose three or four more. <laughs> yeah, talk about. <laughs> the activity level is, is the important part, I think. Well, she's 14 now, so her activity oh, yeah. level isn't that. Yeah, because we got her when she was about eight or nine. Yeah, she's mine are eight. They're bonded. They're a bonded pair, so they're quite yeah. fun because, uh, you know, they like to hang out together quite a lot. So. Yeah, ours is, like I said, about 14. So she's not as active. She's still pretty active, I guess, but, you know, they get there. But it doesn't help that I have a husband that likes to sneak her food. I'm making sandwiches here. Have a piece of my sandwich. Aww. I'm making, you know, I'm like, no. So my cats, weirdly, they do not understand treats. Like I bought them treats. They're like, what the hell is that? So now they will, um, now they're interested in the tuna water mm -hmm. and they, they both like catnip, but I think it only really makes one loopy. The other one that does like, yeah, it doesn't really affect her. Although she gets all excited about it. So. Our previous cat was like that. She would not eat people food at all, except same thing tuna water yeah um but this cat she she'll steal cheerios from my husband's breakfast bowl <laughs> and the thing is he doesn't use he doesn't use actual milk he uses almond milk and i'm like why is she even eating that oh, cheerios well. and almond milk so she'll eat anything if you don't keep an eye on her but our previous uh, cat I was like yours never never touched people food we could leave her normal dry food out and she'd eat until she was full and walk away so she was never overweight whereas yeah. this one she'll eat until it's empty it doesn't matter how much you put in there so <laughs> yeah I, I my one cat tally she will eat everything yeah. she'll eat the other cat's food I think so the other cat's name is Twitch she will she would like to be free fed and sometimes she'll leave a few you know mm -hmm. pieces of food in the dish but like as soon as Tally's walking over then Twitch is like back because <laughs> it's like she knows <laughs> You know, but yeah, so. But. Yeah, so we have but to measure good. out her food and do the whole works. But they're good company when when you're in lockdown. Yes. <laughs> and can't really see anybody else, so. That's true. <clears throat> Other than Zoom. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. No, that's very true. I don't, I mean, I'm lucky I've got the husband, so I'm not alone, but. <laughs> I don't think I've talked to my daughters much at all in the year and a half. Cause yeah, have, it's hard. Yeah. Because so, yeah. I used to have lunch regularly with the one who lives in, in the city here. The other one lives in another province, so obviously not. But we haven't. So I think we've texted maybe three times in the last year, which is you know, weird. Yeah. Yeah. I have a couple, so I have a, I'm on, I'm in a condo, but I'm on the ground floor. So I have an outdoor patio oh, yeah. and uh, I bought a heater for it <laughs> because two other ladies come over on Friday nights and we'll have a glass of wine. So we're out there shivering in the middle of winter because <laughs> it's like, you're the only real people I've talked to, you know, like, you know, because, uh, you know, you don't really spend a lot of time chatting in the grocery store and that's pretty much where I go. Yeah, I know in Alberta here what they allowed, because we have one friend that comes over once a month. They allow, if you're single, you can have what they call two outside points of contact. Right. They can be part of your bubble, basically. So we have a friend who's single and, you know, we're one of his outside points. So he comes comes over to game once a month. Um, yeah. Otherwise, again, he would have no one to talk to. No one face to face, that's for sure. Yeah, but you're allowed to bring them inside. When I say outside point, I mean outside your 
family. Okay, I yeah. see. Okay. They're, they're, he's allowed, they're allowed to come in and socialize. It's as if they're, they are your family. Okay, uh, we didn't have that. No, we were not allowed. But only so. single people are allowed to do that. Of course, we're a couple, so it's like, anyways. But yeah, they allow yeah. a single person to come to visit another two two other people as it were yeah i think i think we were singles were allowed to join with one other household mm -hmm. um but i don't think they recommended to go inside so oh yeah um, i i don't know i didn't really look because it's like you know we would already had this thing set up since last summer yeah like, you know, know. <laughs> so yeah we had a pretty tight lockdown around spring because our numbers were getting silly but now they're manageable now in theory people are getting vaccinated so they're not yeah bad. yeah so i'm double vaccinated now so we're single but next week is when our second shot is although yeah. we're in that strange bubble of because our first shots were astrazeneca yeah and, same and now there's and we've booked for a second astrazeneca shot but of course now they're saying oh you should get something else i'm like I don't know. I'm just going to stick with what I've got. <laughs> I, I got Pfizer, but mostly because that's what they had. Like, yeah, I, I went through a drugstore. And um, so the, for the first shot for AstraZeneca, I think that's all they were allowed to give out at the time. And then the second one, they called me and I'm like, which one is it? They're like, we only have Pfizer. I'm like, okie dokie, I'll show up tomorrow. Let me know. Yeah. So. Well, apparently we're booked for a second AstraZeneca, but I have a feeling they're going to tell us to change it when we're when we're there. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I had a friend that she got a, her second shot was AstraZeneca too. So um, they're out there, but they just they're they're changing the the you know the messaging yeah. all the time. So and I understand that because yes, it's, we're all learning here. Yep. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's, nothing's fixed. But yeah, I, I sadly I think we're going to be. Um, even though things are going to be open, let's put quote marks around that. Um, mm -hmm. I, I think we're still going to have some oh, yeah. issues. Uh, like until the whole world is vaccinated, I think this thing is just going to show up. Well, Alberta is completely opening July 1st and everyone's going, are you crazy? Including me who lives in Alberta because they wanted it open for the stampede which is yeah and i'm like the stampede's gonna, not gonna make money because there's gonna be so many people like me that's like you may be open but i'm not there yet i'm not going yeah you, you're gonna get all the people that um let's just say they may mean are not taking the best precautions um yeah well alberta they've been like that all the protesters they threw a rodeo because that's what we do in Alberta is when we're going to protest, we're going to have a rodeo. So yeah. now they're opening the rodeo for July 1st because that's what our government wanted to do, not because yep. it's necessarily safe. So yeah, Alberta's going to be completely open to everyone July 1st. I'm like, yeah. Yeah. Um, and on Ontario, I think Ontario is like, they made some horrible decisions. So did and and there's an election a year away and the go current government's popularity is in the dumpster. So they're finally trying to follow the science. Um, but yeah, they get a lot of pushback. Alberta's the same way. Um, we, like, I think they did a poll and our government's actually the least popular in the country. <laughs> but they're lucky in that our election's not for another two years and yeah. people have very short memories. <laughs> yeah. So, well. so yeah. yeah, it'll be interesting. But I'll be glad when it's done. I'm not there yet, everyone else maybe, but I'll be glad when I am there. Yeah, I, I think it'll be interesting because um, I will probably be wearing a mask come winter. Just because it's been really nice not having colds and flus. Like, exactly. it has been nice. Yeah, John so. and I were commenting on that. We have been the healthiest ever, because he works at a school, which is basically a germ factory. Yep. But we have been the healthiest we've ever been during this lockdown. <laughs> yeah. 
because yeah. he hasn't come home with colds and flus and all that. I'm like, well, yeah. maybe you should consider keeping those up. He doesn't think the parents will go for it, but it's like, well, but, and I guess that's something that uh, even before this in a lot of Asian countries, they've been doing that. And it's, it's like, it's, it's a courtesy. If you think you're sick, it's a courtesy to wear masks so that you don't infect everyone else. So, but because right before the lockdown, so I went on my very first cruise, which is probably my last cruise. <laughs> I got back on February 1st, 2020. Oh, no. And even, even on the ship, we were hearing about, um, you know, this new thing. And there were cruise line, cruise ships that were being infected. And then, and then like two weeks later, it's like, oh my God, we're so lucky that we didn't get stuck like that. What kind of cruise? there were was some... Uh, so it was a Panama Canal one. It was my mother's um, 89th birthday. And I'm, I'm kind of, uh, at the time, I'm like, I don't know why it's 89. We're not waiting until our 90th. But it's kind of a good <laughs> thing we didn't wait because we wouldn't have gone on it. So it was a yeah. big family thing. So how many were there? It was maybe 10, 12 people. Wow. So, uh, yeah, I have quite a few siblings and most of them are married. So, <laughs> yeah, so it was fun. But uh, now I look back and it goes like, oh yeah, all those buffet meals. Yep. Hmm, I think it's going to be a long time before I eat a buff at a buffet. Yeah, I think that's <laughs> so. what you said for a lot of people. Although but, you're sitting there because all the restaurants are starting to open up now, and I'm like, restaurants have salad bars, which are basically buffets. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I think there are business models that aren't going to really survive because, um, no. you know, you're not going to gonna get enough people. And if you do, you're going to get the ones that who maybe are not taking all the precautions. So the chance of spread is really high. Exactly. <laughs> so and, and you guys have a lottery now. We do. For, yeah, because we were having trouble reaching that 70 percent mark. Right. And a lot of provinces I've been doing the lottery, but I put mine and my husband's name in it. Why not? You sure. have to register for the lottery. You're not automatically registered. And then if your name is pulled, they'll double check to make sure you've been vaccinated. Ah, oh, I That's see. What you're okay. doing. You might as well. Yeah. Probably better odds than, uh, you know, 649. Well, <laughs> the worst it could be is if everybody registered, they think there's only about three three and a half million people in alberta so yeah so you know one in three million are decent odds and it won't even be that much because not everybody will register yeah because you're not registered automatically you actually have to go onto the website and, put it in and it's not it's a yeah and it's not like a lottery where they pull numbers because this is like they're going to pull a name so somebody will win yeah yeah so and there's, hey good doing, luck yeah <laughs> they're doing three of them <laughs> so why not chance of yeah. winning one you know, the chance of winning is what three and three million, which is decent. Yeah, but still not likely. I'm not holding my breath. No, but but it worked because they were having a lot of trouble getting up to that seventy percent mark. They they had stalled about sixty eight percent, and they said it. The put in the lottery, and if we reach the seventy percent mark, which I think we did last week, then they'll they'll you know that's when they decided they could open up that's when they decided they can open up and they and that's was the lottery threshold we'll do the lottery with everyone that's registered once we reach the 70 percent right so because they were they really wanted that 70 percent mark first dose only though not two doses yeah yeah i think ontario we're sitting around 75 percent first dose and uh, just over 20 for a second, which was the threshold for opening up more things. So I think that's probably going to come soon. So, Yeah, well, you have to remember, Alberta is a really conservative town. So you get a lot of people who just won't. Yeah. Conservative province. I like to call it little Texas, but, you know, the oil, the cattle, the conservatives. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it was really hard. We we're lucky we got that 70%. I don't expect it to get much higher, to be honest. 
Well, and you have to remember, like, that's not the general population. That's of the people who are eligible, right? So any kid under 12, that's, they're not counted in that. No, exactly. Yeah, yeah, so. And actually, the lottery is only for 18 and older. They're not even doing it for. I think legally, I don't know that kids can play games of chance like that. Exactly. So Yeah, probably not. But yeah, so, yeah. so, so, yeah, so but they wanted an overall population, 12 and 12 and up at the 70%, yeah. so. Yeah. We're there. So I guess this the stampede's is... happening. I'm rolling my eyes as we speak. <laughs> this is the, um, may you live in turbulent times or whatever the interesting, interesting times. times, so yeah, so. Yeah, I don't lie on the interesting times. I'm happy with boring times. But to, to be honest, like, other than, you know, I can't go and visit friends and family, my life doesn't change that much. Uh, I worked from home before, I work from home, like, at the moment, I'm, so I'm kind of semi-retired, so the only thing I do right now is write. Mm -hmm. um, so I wasn't really going out a lot anyways. Uh, yeah. I have some friends where, you know, we would meet once a month for lunch. We miss that. We're doing Zoom calls, which is not the same, but, you know, we're hopeful that August we can actually meet somewhere and eat on a patio. So that's exciting. Yeah. <laughs> I and I was the afraid. same way. I mean, I always tell people I work from home before it was cool. <laughs> so it was, you know, and Margaret and I would meet up once a month, you know, again, over yeah. brunch or something. Yeah. And I'd meet my daughter once a month for lunch and that was the extent of my exterior social we used to have people come over almost every weekend for gaming which we don't now we just have the one yeah. person, but um but yeah we never went out at, at all yeah well I, I think so I worked I used to do contract IT work and yeah so I, I worked from home from like 2010 <coughs> I love working from home <laughs> so do I actually it's um it's nice. Although I know a few people who can't do it, they get too easily distracted. Uh, if you're an extrovert, then then you have a hard time. Yeah. Um, and yeah, yeah, you have to be disciplined, but you know. And I like, oh, my husband, like he's not working from home. They kept the schools open here in Alberta. But all of his evening meetings, you know, the board meetings and the parent meetings and whatnot have all been through zoom so he could come home in the evenings to do them he's like we need to do this all the time then i'm home for yeah. supper every night yeah yeah a lot of that is going to happen i think he's you know, maybe not every zoom meeting will be zoom but um and maybe maybe not with parents because i think those you probably get um on in face to face you might be able to draw them out a little bit more Maybe. Um, he's thinking more of, um, well, parent-teacher interviews work out better actually under Zoom because the parents have, really like it because it's easier to, say, be from home or be from work and take a time out to do a parent interview That's true. than come into the school, either take time off from work if you have to or whatever to do a parent or interview. Or get someone to watch your kids and all of that yeah. stuff. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, it is very destructive. So, you know, so if you if your kids are supposed to be in bed by eight and you're not home until then, then yeah. So same with the parent council meetings uh, and all that. John's uh, a principal, so he attends pretty much all the evening meetings. He would be gone right. one or two evenings a week. I wouldn't he'd be wouldn't be home till nine or ten at night. So he likes it. He can come home. He can have supper. Yes, he has to do the meeting. He closes the door, but he, you know, it's not gone. There's no travel time. Exactly. There's no weather to deal with. Exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, well, I hope my meetings on Zoom. He hated it when they were, we did shut down early on for a few months and he hated that. He, but he said it was exhausting being all day on Zoom with teachers and kids and whatnot. Right. Yeah. But the the evening meetings, all that's all he wants now. That can continue even once we open up. <laughs> <laughs> He's probably not the only one, so you know. So where are we at? Hey, we're at forty minutes already, and we I think we spent half of it talking about the pandemic. 
Well, you know what? Big topic. It, it's something that's affecting every single person out there. It is. So, yeah. So do you have a, and I'm switching gears, call it, you know, it's subject whiplash, I know. Do you have a, when you're writing, do you listen to music or do you prefer it silent or? I cannot listen to music because it just, I find it too distracting. Even I like suppose, classical or something like that? I, I'm not a big fan of classical music. Oh, okay. So I, you know, yeah, I'd probably have to, <laughs> what, yeah. So, and I don't really have any like streaming service. So I'd be listening to the radio and then uh, people would be talking and yeah. then there'd be ads and yeah. So I, I prefer silence to be honest. Um, I find it less distracting. Although sometimes I, I happen to start writing and, and maybe the radio's on and I can tune it out, but then something will happen. I'm like, Ooh, it pulls me out. So, <laughs> you know. I find it depends upon what I'm doing. Like, because we have Amazon Prime, I'll also listen to the Prime music. If right. I'm doing, but if I'm just working on spreadsheets, like working on, on royalties and whatnot, then I can actually put podcasts on because spreadsheets are pretty mindless. Oh, okay. But yeah. And, and I don't listen to much classic either. I'm pretty rockish. So what do you listen to? I tend to listen to kind of like a, a new alternatives, right? Like, um, uh, so I'm not, so, so I was into kind of punk rock. Oh yeah. Uh, new wave. Um, so if those songs come on, I like them, but I also like to listen to new things. Um, I don't buy that much. No, we ha I haven't bought music. My husband buys music all the time, but I haven't bought music in ages. But yeah, I listen to, you know, like, Black Veiled Brides or Five Finger Death Punch or, you know, so heavier rock. Yeah. I think the, uh, what's the last thing? I can't even remember what the last thing I bought was. Um, but yeah, I mostly just listen to a radio station, Toronto based radio station <laughs> that plays, like, I'm going to say more current stuff, but yeah. the alternative. So, um, yeah. My husband gets the Guitar World magazine because he plays as a hobby. And every time they come out with a magazine, they'll feature various artists. So he'll yeah. listen to their music and then go, oh, I like this, buy their music. And then never listen to it again. And I just... <laughs> well, he's supporting them. <laughs> yeah. You know. You know, the next... Because next month, a new, something new will come out and he'll buy a new album through iTunes, you know, digital. Does he, does he buy single songs or does he buy the CDs? He buys the whole album digitally. It's, yeah. He doesn't buy the physical CDs, but yeah. Yeah. He gets the whole album. So they get, you know, the $10 out of them or whatever, but. And again, because my understanding is that like the streaming services, they, they pay them pennies. Like it takes yeah. a lot for them to make anything. And if you buy like the full CD, then, you know, at least the artist gets something. Yeah. So. Yeah, no, he, I, no, he's supporting the artist. I just laugh at him yeah. because he buys a new album every month. And sometimes if he's playing a game, he'll buy the soundtrack to the game and, and, and whatnot. And we'll listen to whatever he bought pretty much exclusively for the month until he buys something new. Yep. That's how it goes. Yep. yep. Okay. <laughs> so. so, so yeah, so. we've given our money to a lot of musicians, I guess. Hey, there are worse things than supporting the arts and that's, the artists. That's true. That's true. <laughs> so <laughs> he does that with books too, because we buy digital books. We don't have we um, downsized about five years ago, and we're in a condo ourselves, but it's a townhouse condo, so we got rid of all our physical books. But he will go on Amazon sales and say, "Oh, this book is for sale digitally," and he'll buy the, all the like once a month. He'll actually once a week he'll buy two or three digital books. Again, that he never reads because he <laughs> doesn't read that fast. I read about a book a week, a week and a half. It takes him two weeks to go, uh, two to three weeks to go through a book. So he's got hundreds of books on his app that he hasn't even looked at. I, I find it really hard to read when I'm writing. Yeah, um, I bet. 
it just, uh, the stories can get mixed up. So I usually binge read. So I'll buy books and then once I, you know, have, so I'll finish a draft and then I'll take a week or something, maybe two, and then I'll binge read a bunch of books. Um, but yeah, uh, I'll tell you, like you when I was on the cruise, I think I, I read like, <laughs> I, so it was a 10 day cruise. I think I wrote, read like eight books. Wow. Like I, I did nothing except read. It was great. <laughs> what do you like to read? Um, so, you know, a lot of sci-fi fantasy. Uh, right now, I tend to write to read people I know. So oh, yeah. uh, I read Skylar Don Cameron. I read uh, Krista Ball. Um, uh, the Marie Jenner stuff, right? So yeah. I read that one, E.C. Bell. Um, yeah, I tend to read the people I know at, because those are the books I like. Those are the books I buy, oh, yeah. and then yeah. when I have my you know break between writing, then it's like, oh, what have I got? And then I tend to go through <laughs> you know a couple of those, and yeah. and then it's it'll be like months before I read another book. Probably, it's not great. I do read I read magazines, but I find it hard to read books. Yeah, I have the advantage in that. And I'm sure Margaret has the same issue you do, you know, editing and whatnot, but I'm not part of the editing process per se. So I don't, when I get, when I read, for example, your books, I've read the first three of the intelligencers. I haven't read Dingies and Deceit yet. I'll read it once it's done and it's released. Yeah. And it doesn't interfere with anything I'm doing because I dot reading part of the editing process of yes of it so i so i can read i devour books i read 40 a year ish so you know yeah i just and and it doesn't interfere because i'm not involved in you know i get it once you guys are done editing and writing it so yeah before i started writing a lot i i used to read you know uh, probably a book a week like that was yeah. that was it like I, I you know I had a boyfriend at the time he would watch tv and I would sit there and read because I was not interested in whatever he was watching I don't <laughs> even know what he was watching so probably some science thing which would be interesting but John and I are lucky we like the same video tv stuff so and I tend not to watch a lot of movies. I'm more like TV. I like that serial component to it. Um, and again, that goes back to when I was reading. Mm -hmm. I like to have the serial books. Like, the you know, you got oh, yeah. uh, back then it was more mostly trilogies. I think now there's more longer series. But uh, yeah, so. I tend to with books, I'll, I'll grab the first book of a series. And if I like it, then I'll grab all the rest and read them back to back to back too. So yeah, that's how I I like to read. Yeah. Um, but what did I just do? I pushed a button and got full screen. Ah, that's okay. <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> oh, it won't affect the video. Okay. Except my little commentary behind here. It's fine. It's just I had you on a window and I accidentally made you full screen. So you were in, oh, glorious, I see. You okay. were in glorious 40 inch there for a bit. There we go. Oh man, that's a big screen. <laughs> I'm a gamer. <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> I'm a gamer. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't really, well, I, yeah, I don't really play a lot of like those types of games. We game both. We do video games and we do the, um, tabletop games so we're big gamers both ways yeah so when I was I'm gonna say just before because my brother was in university at the time and he started this was when Dungeons and Dragons was new yeah we do that too and that's when he he got into that I never really got into it so um I think reading was enough for me at the time oh yeah <laughs> and I was like I think I'm too old for that stuff I didn't You're never play too old no, I'm no, but I, we're about the same age if I'm not older. <laughs> oh, I tell you, you're older than me, but <laughs> yeah, my 34 and 33 year old daughters might tell you otherwise. <laughs> I was born in 1960, so okay, you have a couple of years on me, but not that much. <laughs> not a lot. We're we're close enough. 
but yeah so i never really got into them uh, so i remember playing like duke nukem the first yep. you know the early duke nukems and stuff like that but uh, once it got more 3d i i I got so stressed out when I was like behind the gun part of it. I, I like the flat ones. I like, you know, the the old arcade game thing. Oh, yeah. That. So you like third person over first person is what you're yeah. saying. And I play more third person too. First person, I have to play with it because I get motion sickness. So I tend to make it change the field of view to fishbowl, which probably makes no, no sense to you if you're not a gamer, but... <laughs> But yeah, I prefer third person as well, but the new third person games are pretty good. Yeah, but I just remember like I, I, I was all like after after playing some of those, it's like I'm just all tensed up and like heart rate and everything. And then I'm like, oh, that's not really good for me. I don't You're think playing I like the wrong that. games then. You need to play the more relaxing ones. I guess. <laughs> Yeah, Duke Nukem I, is not relaxing. I, I waste enough time looking at screens <laughs> I don't need more excuses for that. My so. life is all screens. I read <laughs> ebooks. I work in front of a screen. I read ebooks. I'm a gamer. And then when we watch TVs or once a week we'll watch a movie, it's in front of a screen. So yeah. <laughs> I think my life is 90%. Screen. Everything there except for the gaming part. So yeah. that's me too, right? So uh, my cats would be very neglected if I got myself addicted to video games. <laughs> I don't think my cat feels neglected. But, <laughs> yeah, but um, your cat's got two people. I have two cats, one person. That's true. But um, well, she's more one person because my husband's not home during the days. So, but um, you know, we all watch very little TV. We watch one show a night which is basically one hour, so it's not. Yeah. So we make it up in books and gaming, I think, the difference. Yeah. Well, we've been at this almost an hour. Well, I guess less than, because there was a lot of preamble that won't be on the recording. <laughs> so give us your pluggables. If people want to stalk you, where's the best place they can do? Facebook, uh, uh, Snapchat, uh, janeglatt.com and twitter is just at janeglatt it's kind of it i don't really have anything else website twitter facebook i i'm mostly just that's yeah. mostly family stuff i i no. do promote my book but it's mostly you know no some some people have um, a separate professional facebook yeah um but yeah i don't yeah. want your personal facebook <laughs> that's yeah. I don't want your oh, personal, so. don't want your email, don't want your personal Facebook. Oh. <laughs> so. Well, sometimes we get people who I'm interviewing, I'll, I'll ask for it and they'll start off with, well, my email is, and I'll cut them off there. I'll go, nope. <laughs> yeah. If they want to contact you, they can contact Taiki and we'll pass it through. They can contact me through my website. I have um, or that, know, a yeah. contact thing. You can also sign up for a newsletter. I'm not really prolific with the newsletters but I will be sending something out but yeah you can you can do that at janeglatt.com you can sign up for a newsletter and yeah and we'll basically when something comes out that's when I <laughs> send out a, you know a newsletter I know there are people that you know we used are, to do that and then we switched it to twice a month and I'm always because I'm doing the, I'm the one who does the newsletter I'm like Oh my God, what are we going to put out this week? That's why we started doing the recipes. It's like, okay. we need filler. <laughs> we need fillers. <laughs> That's yeah. why we called up yeah, the recipes. It's hard. It's marketing. It's hard. It's got you know, to be relevant to people. Keep them engaged, all of that stuff. So. so, yeah, so we um did say we do the newsletters this week. And actually, I find the titles the hardest. I'm like, what the hell am I going to call this one? It's pretty, who knows? So. Okay, well, I want to thank you for joining us. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you for uh, organizing the Zoom and thank you for inviting me. Yes, and we it's will been... probably do it again on book five. I, I'm sorry, I'm kind of a boring interview, but hey. <laughs> boring Not is much good. I, 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 you know, I have conversations with my sister. I call her up. Anything new? No, nope, not really. How about you? Yeah, no, nope, not really. 
<laughs> because like you know nope boring is good <laughs> yeah it's good to live through yeah you don't want to live through too many exciting things that's very true because some of those exciting things will be bad exciting <laughs> that's very true yeah that's very true I'm all about the non-exciting, good, bad, or otherwise. <laughs> Keep a steady cue. All right. Well, thank you very much. Okay. You're welcome.